busy time of year, but managed to sneak out after work and go for a quick shore dive. The tides were looking quite promising for what we wanted to do, so we jumped in the water in about 6 p.m. On the way out, it was pretty evident there was going to be a few fish around as you can see all the bait racing through the shallows. I actually popped my head out and I could see gannets diving further out to sea, so we swam out. It's really great to see this. We see this more and more often at certain times of the year. You see the masses of small snapper here. It's a really good sign for our future. These baby snapper were everywhere on our dive and when you lie on the bottom, big clouds of them would swim up to you. Unfortunately for them though, they make a really good meal for John Dory, birds, kingfish and all other predatory fish. So it's a good place to look around and see what else might be here. Heading further along the shallow weed edge, we find a nice looking spot. There's a lot of bait fish here. There's still all those snapper and there's lots of baby trevally, as well as there's a slight current pushing on this edge. It pays when the water's not really clear like this to take your time to get to the bottom in case you see something on the way down. Our main target today will be John Dory, kingfish and snapper. So this is exactly where we want to be looking. And what do you know, right next to me, I must have just about landed on it, is a bit, nice big John Dory. They'll often do this and face away from you making a difficult shot, and sometimes you just have to take them. I've been outsmarted by plenty of John Dorys before, so I'm always cautious to take a shot early. Even though normally a docile fish, sometimes they absolutely take off onto the sand, it can be really hard to spot if the water's dirty. It's a perfect start for us. You see these different places, you icky fish. John Dory, you want to icky straight in the top of the head, just between the eyes there. Straight back down. I've headed a little bit further along the weed edge, but not too far because we're in a nice fishy spot. As soon as you find an area where there's lots of bait fish, Take your time and make multiple dives there because fish just appear. They'll come out of nowhere. As the tide pushes onto here, even though it's only slight, all these bait fish get pushed on and other pelagic fish as well as other predatory fish will turn up to feed on them. Pick your spot on the bottom. So I've tried to get myself here a little bit hidden but not too hidden so I can see around. It's a really good sign when you see these goatfish being active, swimming around. If the goatfish are stagnant on the bottom, often there might not be much going on. I'm panning slowly all around me because you never know where the fish might come in. You want to be cautious not to move your head too quickly as you'll spook fish around you. But you've got to check, especially when it's dirty like this. A John Dory like that last one, if I never turned my head, I would have never seen it. There could be a John Dory sitting here somewhere, and look at this. Like a flying saucer comes flying and doesn't even realise I'm here, and I'm just taking my time, being really cautious to not spook it. It's coming in to try and get one of these little trevally. Same thing again, don't take too many chances, I'll just make sure I get it. This is a smaller one, but that's still good. Pretty pleased with our start as we weren't expecting too too much from this afternoon. We're a bit of a race against time because it's going to be start getting dark just after eight o'clock so we don't have too much time in the water. See here I echo the John Dory in the top of the head between the eyes but I'm actually a little bit too far forward and often common you can see here how his eyes are still facing down I haven't echoed him properly so we want to make sure I give it another shot. Move my light knife just a tad back further and you see there, the eyes stop moving and it's out. Back down on the bottom, it's still fishy. 
all the way along this shallow weed edge here. It's only about eight meters deep. You see the kelp slowly pushing in that tide. Doing that slow head movement round and around because you never know a John Dory could be anywhere here. A kingfish could make an appearance or even a decent sized trevally. There's a lot going around all around me. There's goat fish everywhere, small trevally, small snapper. It's amazing the fish life. Starting to get low on breath, so I'm just gonna shoot one of these goat fish here. Bit of a sucker for them and I liked eating them. The key thing when you're diving with your dive buddy is make sure you're efficient. So I get back on the surface, quickly get my gun back together and I'm gonna grab the drop weight off my dive buddy and then make sure that we don't drift off the spot. If you, you always wanna give feedback to your dive buddy to tell them what it's like on the bottom so they know and then it's, it enables them to plan their next dive. So I'm just telling you, you just wanna move up a little bit there and do another dive. I wanna stay where all these fish are. And while she's doing this, I'm just gonna prepare the goat fish but at the same time from all this commotion, something might come in. So I'm just scaling the goat fish, I'll guff and gill it. It didn't take very long and some kingfish came in. In the last video we talked about finding snap on a real gun, so this time we'll talk about finding a kingfish on the real gun. I haven't put a great shot in, but it's a good holding shot. And we'll just talk about how you fight a fish without your float line attached to the handle of your gun. So though this kingfish seems fairly subdued, I'm going to have a couple of attempts at grabbing it early on, but you want to be so cautious, especially with real line, not to get tangled up on the line. Getting a kingfish and grabbing it too early can result in you getting tangled up in this monofilament or in the real line and get yourself in danger. You see in the background there's still kingies swimming around from all the commotion. I'm going to have one go here and see if I can grab it just carefully but it's still got plenty of energy left so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it peel some of my real line if it's going to take off and then just slowly work it back to the surface and see if I can wear it out so you see I'm constantly looking to make sure I don't get tangled in the line here it peels line out of my reel I'm just going to fast forward through a lot of this so you don't get too bored. I'm just slowly working it up, letting it go as it takes off. You just want to wear the fish out. Looking back to make sure the line's not tangled around me or my dive buddy. Very important, that. Eventually, the kingfish will wear itself out. Kingfish are notorious for fighting hard for long periods of time. So you want to make sure you don't grab them when they're too green and you might get yourself in trouble. I'm going to try and position myself in a good spot, get its tail between my legs and get my hands in its gills and wrap it up. If I try and grab its tail, even though it's only a small kingfish, it will flick my hand off. So here's perfect time. I get my legs around its tail and my hands in its gills to take control of the fish. First thing you do is you want to dispatch the fish. And with pelagic fish, you always want to bleed them. Like the John Dory, I think I missed the sweet spot just by a little bit, so I just make sure I've acid it properly. Bleed all your pelagic fish. You should bleed pretty much all your fish because it'll make them better eating. Once the fish is dispatched and bled, I want to try and get this in my float boat as soon as I can. I want to get in my wetty float boat so I get it out of the water to not attract any unwanted attention. Now we've got to put all our reel line back on our reel. So I've got all the slack line out, get the drop weight off my buddy so they can keep diving and I'm winding the slack line on nice and neatly. Tidy up all my gun and get reloaded again. Always check your flopper. See how I'm making sure I get any meat out of the flopper so the flopper works properly. You want your flopper to be slack for the first bit 
and then catch. So when it goes through a fish, it holds. You don't want anything jammed in your flopper and you don't want any corrosion stopping your flopper from opening. Just lie on the bottom to see if anything turns up, but it soon becomes apparent there's not much, and I've still got a bit of oxygen left, so I'm just gonna head along here before I come up, just in case. Swimming along a weed edge like this, in case you might find a boarfish parked up or another John Dory. Scanning side to side, as the John Dory could be up on the weed or it could be out on the sand, you don't know. And I spot one just here. And a sort of nothing spot, more luck than anything. And the John Dory's doing that same thing, they'll try and face away from you to make a narrow target. I'm not going to risk stabbing it. Another nice John Dory. As mentioned before, you don't always have to just lie on the bottom the entire time. You can mix up the way that you hunt different fish. You can swim along the bottom, depending on what it's like. Because in the dirty water, a fish might not see you if it's 10 metres away, so you need to swim towards it to gain its attention. This is a good one too. Reload my gun and we're going to head back into the shallows and see if we can find a snap on the way back in. As it's going to get dark soon and we want to get back to the car. Good tasty catch. We've got three John Dory, a couple of nice goatfish and a kingfish. Perfect way to end the year. <laughs>